Hi, today we're going to talk about the um, situation where you have a seller that owns a property uh, and they must sell their property prior to uh, being able to close escrow on the new property. So it's going to be a contingent, a sale contingent upon the sale of another property. And uh, this is your standard RPA. So as you scroll down to the standard, you sc scroll down through the standard RPA document. And you are get, going to get to the section just above where the addenda are. That went too far. There we go. Um, sorry. Right here, there is a section under paragraph four, which is sale of buyer's property. And it says, if checked, uh, actually, it says under paragraph A, this agreement and buyer's ability to obtain financing are not contingent on the sale of any property owned by the buyer. So that means, as a default, the, the deal is not contingent on the buyer selling something else. There's a checkbox. If you check on that, which we are going to check that. And if you check it, it says this agreement and buyer's ability to obtain financing are contingent upon the sale of the property owned by the buyer as specified in the attached addendum, CAR form COP. So when we click on that box, it automatically, you'll see up above here, it, it says contingency for sale of buyer's property is actually brought into our folder. So if I come up here to the left and I hit the back button, you can see these are the forms that I have. This is the standard residential purchase agreement we were looking at. And then it automatically added that COP document for us. So we'll click on that and open that up and then scroll up to the top. So uh, as we run through this, um, this is the title of the document is contingency for sale of buyer's property and notice to remove contingencies. So it, it serves a couple of purposes. Um, the, first, the first purpose is to identify that the property is actually contingent. And what is it contingent on? It's contingent on either a property that is listed, property that isn't listed, property that's under contract. Uh, and we'll go through that as we go through it. And then it also identifies the, um, the rights that the seller has in order to get out from underneath this COP document. And we'll talk about that as well as we go through it. So first, this is an addendum to the purchase agreement or some other document in this, in, in virtually every instance you're gonna use this, it's gonna be as a, an addendum to the purchase agreement. Um, there is room for other, uh, but it's unlikely that you use it for anything else. Dated, obviously we need to reference a date on the document on the property known as. And so you would fill in the address of the, of the uh, property that, um, uh, the purchase agreement is purchasing, so it is the seller's property between the name of the buyer and the name of the seller, and then the buyer's property is added uh, to, to this last line. So that's the property that is going to be, uh, the contingency is going to be based on. Uh, paragraph one, buyer's property contingency, the agreement is contingent upon either A, so this first paragraph, the default is A. And under A, the buyer is entering into a contract for the sale of and the close of escrow on the buyer's property, paragraph two and four. So what that basically is saying is, is that the, the deal is contingent upon the buyer's property actually closing escrow, going into contract and closing escrow. There's a couple other optional defaults that you can select. One is only entering into contract for the sale of the buyer's property. So if the buyer feels confident enough to where they only want the contingency to be on the, uh, the property going into escrow, we all know that properties fall out of escrow, but uh, there is an option there for them to just say, well, gee, you know, we'll move forward um, as long as we have, we'll remove that portion of the contingency as long as we have the property in escrow, probably not optimum. Most, because A is defaulted, most people are gonna go with that. You're not gonna check box B. For box C, only the close of escrow of the buyer's uh, property. So 
um, it may already be in escrow. And uh, so it, it wouldn't be contingent upon it going into escrow. It's only the close of escrow, the buyer's property. And that might be a box that you might check. Um, under paragraph C, it goes on to say the buyer's property is already in escrow with such and such an escrow company. What is the escrow number? A copy of the contract for sale of the buyer's property and the contract contact information and escrow number for the sale collectively. Uh, escrow evidence is attached to the COP form, or if you don't have it attached to the COP form, I'd recommend you do, um, that you can state that you will deliver it either two days or some other number of days afterwards, okay? Um, if it's paragraph, if, if, if you checked uh, only entering into the contract, the entering into contract of the sale of the buyer's property, so if A1 or AB applies, this agreement is saying if the buyer has 17 days after the acceptance to enter, the, to enter into a contract for the sale of the buyer's property. If they don't do that, okay, if they don't have that number of days, um, or if they don't have it in escrow, then bottom line is that the contract for sale of the property is, uh, is invalid. By the earlier of the time specified in 2A or within two days after the buyer entering the contract for the sale of the buyer's property, the buyer shall deliver the escrow evidence and seller and seller, seller and escrow holder. Paragraph two has to do with the requirement for the buyer, a time period for the buyer to enter into the agreement. And the default is uh, 17 days. So it says buyer shall have 17 days after acceptance to enter into a contract for the sale of the buyer's property. And then paragraph B states by the earlier of the time specified in 2A, which is the 17 days, or within two days after buyer entering into contract for the sale of the buyer's property, buyer shall deliver escrow evidence to the seller and the escrow holder. So it's basically telling them that they have two days to provide that. And um, there's a provision down below that allows the seller to cancel the contract if within the 17 days. So the danger is if you feel confident that you're going to get your property in escrow, um, the buyer's gonna be able to get this property in escrow fairly quickly. Um, sometimes 17 days isn't quite, quite enough time. So you wanna be careful with that, but you also wanna watch that from the seller standpoint, if you're negotiating this, this COP, want to make sure that that's not an unreasonable time period uh, and that, you know, the, the, the fee is being held to the fire of the buyer in order to get the, um, uh, get the property in escrow. Paragraph three, listing and MLS status of the buyer's property. So um, in this particular case, um, it, paragraph A states that the buyer has signed a listing agreement. So it's identifying um, um, who that listing agent and listing brokerage is. Paragraph B states the buyer's property is or will be submitted to the MLS in the geographical area where the buyer's property is located, or it could not be put in the MLS. Um, but there's that, that's information that the seller would probably want to know. Buyer shall, paragraph C, buyer shall deliver to seller evidence of both the listing agreement. And if applicable, applicable, the MLS listing within one day after acceptance of the buyer's property is already listed with a real estate brokerage, or if not already listed within one day after listing with the real estate brokerage. So the buyer is authorizing the seller to receive the listing agreement and the MLS printout so that they can review that and they have one day to do that either after acceptance of the COP document or um, uh, uh, if it hasn't been listed yet, one day after it's been listed. Paragraph four, close of escrow of the buyer's property. If A1 or AC, 1C applies, the buyer has until the following time to close escrow on the sale of the buyer's property. So uh, if, it, if, it, if, 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 it, if it is contingent upon the successful close of that property, um, uh, let me just go back and read that. Um, if the scheduled close of escrow of the seller's property 
or if checked no later than five days prior to the scheduled close of escrow of the seller's property. So um, it, 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 it defaults um, to the time period in the agreement. So if you have a 30 day escrow on the seller's side, okay, but you can modify that to either five days prior to that scheduled closing day or some other date, some other number of days prior to that. Paragraph five, status of the sale of the buyer's property. If A1 or AC applies, buyer agrees to keep the seller informed about the status of the transaction for the sale of the buyer's property, including any modifications, addenda, or amendments to the terms of the acceptive offer or delays to or removals of contingencies. So again, what the buyer is, is telling the seller here is, is that they will provide all the updated information. If there's a hiccup in that transaction, they're obligated to tell them. Um, paragraph B states within two days after the seller's written request, but no earlier than the applicable time to remove contingencies in the contract for sale of the buyer's property, buyer shall deliver the seller evidence of the removal of the contingency. So not only is the seller or the buyer required to keep the seller updated of any changes or anything that happens in their transaction, they're also uh, acknowledging in this agreement that um, when the seller asks for them, uh, that within two days, they have to provide the evidence, the written evidence that those contingencies have been removed. And uh, so again, it's giving sort of the power, the seller's pulled his property off the market uh, it's kind of giving the power of the seller to be able to be on top of this and make sure that things are moving forward uh, in a timely manner. Paragraph six deals with cancellation of the buyer's property. If the buyer's property is in or enters escrow and either party to that escrow gives the other a notice of cancellation in the contract, buyer has two days to deliver the seller that written notice of cancellation. So the seller's in the loop, they know. They're not, they hear that it's in escrow, they're provided the information regarding the escrow it cancels, sometimes the buyer doesn't want to tell the seller that because they are afraid that the seller is going to do something about it. And um, in this particular instance, it, it is a requirement. They have two days to provide or they're in breach of this agreement. This is where it kind of gets a little bit sticky in paragraph seven. So the seller has rights depending on these paragraphs to continue to market the property and see if they can get another acceptable offer. And if they get an acceptable offer, depending on how these boxes are checked, the seller then has the right to cancel on that given buyer if they're unwilling to remove the contingency. So um, let's start with paragraph 7A, backup offers. After acceptance, seller shall have the right to continue to offer the seller's property for sale for backup offers. The, pro uh, the parties acknowledge the broker shall not violate MLS rules requiring accurate property status reporting. So what that means is that the seller has the right to continue to offer the property for sale, looking for maybe a better offer because it's a contingent deal. Um, you have a situation where the buyer's property is for sale and they never sell. And the seller can't be out there in limbo. So they want to continue to try and work this, all right? In this kind of market, not too many of these contingent deals are going to get accepted because the market's too hot. Sellers don't want to have their property off the market while some buyer is trying to sell their property. However, the chances of it happening are better in this market because the buyer has a better chance of selling it. So, you know, it, it is something that, that allows a deal to go together uh, and uh, uh, grants some flexibility uh, but it also gives the seller the right, I mean, at the end of the day, it gives the seller the right to be able to cancel the transaction and move on to a better offer if they choose to. Paragraph B says, removal of buyer contingencies and proof of funds, unless 7C3, which would be um, uh, where they, the seller doesn't have the right to cancel on, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what was that? Uh, is selected if buyer if seller accepts a written backup offer and provides the buyer a copy of the signed accepted backup offer within the temp time specified in 7C1, seller shall have the right to give written notice to the buyer in writing. So 
They get an offer, it's accepted, it's acceptable. They have to provide it to the buyer, then they give them a written notice in writing to remove this contingency. So to remove the contingency for the sale of the property, um, remove the loan contingency, if any, and provide verification of sufficient funds to close the escrow without the sale of the buyer's property. They can't just say, okay, we'll remove the sale of contingency property. They have to provide additional documentation to ensure that they have the right or they have the ability to actually perform on it, okay? Um, so they have to provide that. Uh, if they don't, okay, if they don't provide that within two days uh, after delivery of the notice, then the seller may immediately cancel the agreement in writing and move on, okay? Um, so the, this, this allows and affords the ability for the seller to give notice to remove the contingency the buyer doesn't do it or the buyer does it and doesn't provide the appropriate information to show that they have the ability to close, the seller has the right to cancel that transaction. Now, there's a couple, it defaults to a couple different options on when the seller can provide that notice. Paragraph C1 states that immediately, right at any time, okay, the, the, uh, any time after acceptance, uh, the seller has the right to get another offer. They have the right to uh, issue this notice for them to remove the contingency within two days, or they have the right to move on to that backup offer. That is the default. You're not gonna see too many contracts where the, the buyer is gonna write that in. They're gonna want some buffer. They're gonna want some time period. Paragraph three gives them for the entire term of the contract. So if it's a 30 day escrow, it gives them the right that, that the seller is not going to provide them with a cancellation or removal of contingency um, within, the, within the total period. You're also not gonna see very many sellers that are gonna to agree to that. Um, what's more common is you'll see box number two, delayed right to notify buyer no earlier than 17 days. So within the, end, within the uh, contingency period, typical contingency period, that is the most common box that is checked. Um, if I'm working with the seller, I, I probably want immediate, maybe 17 days. I could pallet 17 days. I'm absolutely not going to go for the term of the contract. You're gonna have some agents that are representing buyers that are gonna check that. That's gonna require a counter offer on the seller's part. You don't want the seller to be hamstrung for the period of the, for the, for the period of the contract so that they can't move forward with another potential offer. This is a very important part of the document. It's probably the most important part because it outlines where the uh, seller's rights are and when they can provide those notices. Okay, so it's something you need to focus in on and, and make sure that you're looking at. Now we go down and it talks about what, what provides the sellers the right to cancel. Okay, um, the seller can cancel paragraph A after first giving a buyer a written notice to remove the buyer contingencies and provide proof of funds above if the buyer fails to take action specified in 7B. So that is um, if they fail to take action up here after giving the proper notice in the, in the, in, in the specific time period, and the seller has the right to cancel and move on. Okay, paragraph B, after first giving a buyer's notice, notice a buyer to perform, if the buyer fails to enter into contract for the sale of buyer's property, within the time specified in paragraph 2A. So if you go back up to 2A, remember we talked about the fact that they had to put their, it's not an escrow, they had to put it in an escrow within 17 days. If they don't do that, then the seller has the right to cancel under paragraph 9B. Paragraph 9C, after first giving the buyer's notice to perform, you're noticing something here, obviously there's always a notice a buyer to perform. If buyer fails to close escrow for the sale of the buyer's property within the time specified in paragraph four. So again, up here, we've talked about the time period. Remember, it has, they have until the, the close of the seller's property or if modified here, five days in advance of that. If they fail to close escrow during that time period or up to that time period, then under 9C, the seller has the right to cancel. 9D, after first giving the buyer's notice to perform, if the buyer fails to deliver escrow evidence within the time specified in 1C or 2B, so they need to provide that 
information to the sellers, they don't do it, uh, and the seller gives them a notice to perform and they still don't do it, then they have the right to cancel. After first giving the notice to perform, if the buyer fails to deliver evidence of the listing of the buyer's property or as applicable the submission of the buyer's property to MLS. So again, if it's the listing side, they have to provide that. If they don't, they give a notice to perform. If they don't do that, then the seller has the right to cancel. If the buyer fails to deliver evidence of the removal of contingencies in the sale of the buyer's property, paragraph G, if the buyer gives notice to the seller to either party, party's cancellation of the contract. So if, it, if they, if they, if, if there is a cancellation after it goes into escrow, then the seller has the right to either continue on or they can cancel the agreement. Buyer's right to cancel. Buyer may cancel the agreement in writing if prior to the buyer's removal of the buyer's contingency specified in paragraph 1A, B, or C is applicable. So if 1A or 1B applies, buyer is unable to enter into the contract for the buyer's property within a specified time. So they, they just say, I can't get it in in that time. I have the right to, can I, 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 I'm, I'm going to cancel. Okay, I have the right to do that. Paragraph B, if 1A or 1C applies, either party for the buyer's property gives notice to the other to cancel the contract for purchase of the buyer's property. So if someone backs out, the buyer then has the right I mean, technically, the, right, the buyer has the right up until 17 days anyway to cancel the agreement. But this gives other provisions under this agreement that allows the buyer to, to, uh, to cancel the transaction. Paragraph 11, time for performance of contract obligations and delivery of the buyer's deposit. Contact, contract obligations other than deposit. So the time periods in the agreement for inspections, contingencies, covenants, so all the contingency periods, everything that, that we're talking about the buyer having to do in the contract, excluding those in the addendum shall begin as specified in the agreement or the day after the buyer delivers the seller any of the following, escrow evidence, uh, buyer's election in writing signed by the buyer to begin the time periods or buyer's removal of the contingency for the sale of buyer's property. So. Um, it defaults that the contract dates, so the 17-day period, the seven-day um, uh, seller requirement to provide statutory disclosures, everything goes along as standard unless this box is checked under 11A, where there are a couple other opportunities. So there, there could be a situation where both buyer and seller agree they're not going to start the transaction. They're not going to provide an escrow deposit. They're not, they're not, they're not actually going to open an escrow until the buyer delivers one of these three things. They either say, we're ready to go. Uh, we, they provide the evidence that the buyer's property uh, is, is uh, an escrow uh, or they remove the contingency. They just decide we don't need the contingency anymore and those, therefore those would go forward. Normally, this box is not going to be checked. Okay? Paragraph B talks about the buyer's deposit. Buyer's deposit shall be delivered to escrow within the time specified in the agreement or within three, day, three business days after the buyer delivers the seller any of the following. Same thing as above here. So they could delay that deposit going into escrow, but the default is, is that you're going to move forward with everything as, as it should. Um, that's the COP document. And uh, obviously the buyer and seller agree to it. Uh, it is used probably, I would say, one out of 20 deals. You might have uh, a, contingency, a contingency transaction like this, um, but it's good for you to understand it. So uh, hopefully that explanation helps you. If you have questions, shoot me an email uh, or uh, uh, text me and, and I can help you uh, understand whatever, or, or answer any question that you might have regarding the document.